Hi everybody, my name is Tim Benware. I'm the owner of uh, Apex Custom Guitars here in Creedmoor, North Carolina. I started in Luthery over 40 years ago by tinkering with my own guitars and uh, that eventually led to doing some minor repairs and setup work, some things such of that nature with friends that I've had, uh, people that needed some work like that. Uh, uh, but it hasn't been my main job for most of my life, uh, but I decided uh, a few years back, when I, about two years before I was getting to ready to retire from my career job, I started this business and I took some guitar building courses, I took some additional uh, advanced repair courses, and I took some additional work in setting dovetail necks and things of that nature, and uh, started small, uh, part-time, and it eventually led uh, to the last eight years that I've been uh, engaged to doing this uh, pretty much full time now. I build uh, custom guitars, both acoustic and electric. And I do guitar restoration and setup work, uh, a myriad of things. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing too complicated. But uh, I thought uh, you might like to see... Uh, how to install a single action truss rod, uh, vintage style, Gibson style truss rod. When I started doing this, uh, I found a lack of information on the internet. Uh, it's a great way to get some information out these days. And so I thought it might be helpful to put this out there, uh, get a little bit more information in the process uh, and, and how to do it. I won't say that I'm uh, an expert at doing these types of necks. In fact, this is going to be my first one. Uh, it's being done for a build uh, for a, a customer who wanted me to build a 1953 Gibson CF100 styled guitar. And so, of course, that, that uh, time frame requires having the single action Gibson style truss rod. So I thought I'd make this video and put it out there and see if it can help some of you folks. And uh, I hope that it will. I hope that you watch. Uh, it's going to take me probably a few days to complete the whole video. So I'll be uh, in and out of different change of clothes and shirts and whatnot. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this. I'm guessing it's probably going to be about a three-part video. Uh, it's not a real complex process I don't think uh, but it probably takes a little bit of time to explain so uh, thanks for taking the time to listen to me and uh, let's get right to it okay so I'm getting ready to build a Gibson style neck with the vintage truss rod and there's not a lot of information out on the net about this process so I thought I'd do this video uh, so, so far I've planed down my neck blank, it's a mahogany neck blank, and I've uh, laid out where I'm going to cut the scarf joint at about 15 degrees, and I've um, got my jig here, I don't know if you can totally see it or not, let me just, uh, you can see the jig, kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like and how it's set up and how I plan on cutting this joint and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now looks pretty good once it gets planed down it's going to get glued up to the neck right here my nut, I measured back to the tenon length, cut that piece off, and cut my stack, my heel stack, for the heel glue up. And uh, what I've got now looks like this, and I've got it in comparison to a neck that's been completed, so you can kind of get an idea what that looks like. And then the next thing I'm going to do is cut the truss rod slot down through the top of the neck so this is what we can see there 
So now I'm going to go ahead and set up my routing table and make that truss rod slot cut. Continuing on with the truss rod installation, what I've purchased and gone ahead and cut to length is a 3 16th inch threaded rod on one end. I've cut it to 14 and a quarter inches. I'm going to round over this end and thread that end for the barrel nut, which is right here, this little barrel nut. And I'll thread that to 10 30 seconds. And then I'll use a ball peen hammer once I determine the length of the threads and screw that barrel nut on and I'll peen the end of that rod over so that it's anchored and we'll anchor that into the neck. So this is about 3 8 of an inch. I have gone ahead on my nut blank, or I'm sorry, my neck blank and uh, drawn where the nut is going to be located, where my tenon length is going to be, and drew a center line down the middle. So my next step is to drill the location where the barrel nut's going to go, and that's uh, a half an inch down from the nut line will be where the adjusting nut goes in, and then of course a 14 and one quarter inch length. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that now and then I will route a three quarter inch slot for the truss rod. I'm sorry, not three quarter inch, three sixteenths of an inch um, wide and five sixteenths of an inch deep. Uh, and I'll explain a little later on when I talk about the filler piece that's going to go in over the top of this why we do that and show you how to uh, gouge out the curvature that we're going to have to put into this neck for it to work uh, adjusting the, the, the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole now. I've gone ahead and set up my drill press. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bit and I've set my depth stop for 5 8 of an inch which is the uh, depth of the barrel nut and I'm going to go ahead and drill that out now. If I've done everything right, this barrel nut should just drop right in, and it will. And now I'm going to go ahead and route out the truss rod slot. <laughs> 